This video, we're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation. And the very first time I was teaching this material, uh, I had Futurama on in the background. And in that particular episode, Bender said the quote that I have here, and it was just too perfect. Uh, so every time uh, I talk about electromagnetic radiation, I always start the slide uh, with this picture of Bender and this quote. And hopefully when we're done talking about electromagnetic radiation, uh, you'll have an idea of what Bender was talking about. So this chapter is all about quantum mechanics. And in order to understand quantum mechanics, we need to understand electromagnetic radiation. And so quantum mechanics is a theory that explains the behavior of very small things. So things on the order of the size of atoms and electrons. And so a lot of the things that we've learned this semester, we've kind of just told you, you know, that this happens, but we haven't really talked about the fund fundamental explanations for why some of these things happen or are the way they are. And so with this chapter, we'll really start to get into that. And so quantum mechanics really forms the foundation of our understanding of all of chemistry. And so some of the questions like, why do alkali metals have a positive one charge when they form ions? Uh, or why are halogens and alkali metals so reactive? And so some of the information we'll learn in this chapter will start to explain uh, a lot of these questions that you might have had. So what is electromagnetic radiation? Well, it's a form of energy. It's all around us. It takes on a number of different forms, uh, many of which you've probably heard of. So visible light, radio waves, x-rays, microwaves. These are all different types of electromagnetic radiation. And so all electromagnetic radiation travels through space as electromagnetic waves. And these are periodic oscillations of electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to one another. And so you can sort of see a diagram of that on the bottom. And so all forms of electromagnetic radiation travel at the speed of light. And the speed of light is given here, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And what differentiates the different types of electromagnetic radiation are the wavelength that we're seeing here, the distance between any two peaks uh, or troughs in the wave, and when the wavelength changes, so too does the frequency and the energy, as we'll talk about. So the number of properties of waves that we want to be familiar with. The first one that I mentioned on the last slide is wavelength. And so the wavelength is the distance between any two peaks in a wave. And the symbol that we use to abbreviate wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. And the units uh, need to be a distance unit and so typically we'll use meters when we're talking about uh, wavelength or some variation of nanometers, millimeters. Um, the amplitude, we'll probably talk about less in this course than some of these other properties, but the amplitude essentially tells us the height of the peaks. So we're thinking about the y-axis here. And so it's the distance between the midpoint of a wave and the peak. And the physical interpretation of amplitude is brightness. So a wave with a higher amplitude is going to be, appear more bright. The third property is frequency. And the letter we use to represent frequency is the Greek letter nu. Uh, it looks like a kind of a cursive V, but it is not a V. It's the Greek letter nu. And the frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a point in one second. Right, so as an example, uh, if this is the distance that these waves can travel in one second, in this red wave, there are one, two, three, four uh, wavelengths. So for this red wave, four wavelengths would pass this point in one second, uh, and so the frequency would be four. And the units on frequency are one over seconds, right? So how many wavelengths pass per second? And other ways you'll see us write that. Sometimes we write one over seconds, Sometimes we write seconds to the minus one, and you've probably seen this unit before. This is a hertz. A hertz is the same thing as a one over second. So a hertz is identical to a one over second, which is the same thing as a second to the minus one. All right, another thing that we want to be aware of is the relationship between wavelength and frequency. And so frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. Right, you can see with a longer wavelength, fewer wavelengths will pass a point in a given second. And so when we have longer wavelengths, we have lower frequencies. And this wave down here, there are actually 16 wavelengths that would fit in this distance. 
And so 16 wavelengths would pass this point in one second, and so the frequency would be 16. So when the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency goes up. And so for electromagnetic waves, we have an equation that relates the frequency and the wavelength, and they're related by the speed of light that we saw on the last slide. So uh, the speed of light for any electromagnetic wave is equal to its wavelength times its frequency. And for any electromagnetic wave, uh, the speed of light is a constant, and it's 2.998 times 10 to the 8, and the units are meters per second. All right, now, I think it's very important for any chemist, or any scientist for that matter, to be familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum. And so I will want you to know uh, the seven different types of electromagnetic radiation and how they compare to one another in terms of wavelength and frequency. So on the long wavelength, low frequency end, we have radio waves. And on the highest end, we have gamma rays. Uh, and and when I say the highest, I mean specifically the frequency, because gamma rays have the shortest wavelength. Uh, the other types of electromagnetic radiation we have are microwaves, infrared, so visible light in some sense is right in the middle. Uh, with a higher frequency than visible light, we have ultraviolet, x-rays, and then as we mentioned finally, the gamma rays. And just to give you an idea of, you know, when we say that radio waves have long wavelength and uh, gamma rays have short wavelength, what are we talking about in terms of the actual wavelengths? So radio waves on this end, we're talking about things that have uh, wavelengths on the order of 10 to 3 or 10 to the 2 meters, right? So 10 to 2 meters, that would be a soccer field or a football field. 10 to the 3rd meters, that would be a kilometer. And so the wavelengths of radio waves are extremely long uh, as we start to get down to uh, microwaves that have shorter wavelengths and somewhat higher frequencies. Now we're talking about things on the order of, you know, baseballs or a period in a textbook. When we get to infrared, now we're talking about the size of cells, uh, visible light and ultraviolet, uh, small cells, you know, bacteria or viruses. Uh, by the time we get into x-rays, and gamma rays, we're talking about things uh, on the order of the size of molecules. And for the shortest wavelength gamma rays, we're even talking about things uh, on the order of the radius of the nucleus of an atom. So the variation in size of the wavelengths and the different types of electromagnetic radiation are incredibly uh, varied. So Quantum mechanics uh, was really developed in the first part of the uh, 1900s, so the 20th century. Now, at the end of the 1800s, physicists kind of thought they had all the important problems in the world figured out, or in the universe for that matter. And they kind of had the universe divided into two categories. There was matter and energy. And so matter was, you know, anything that has mass. And so baseballs, electrons, atoms, um, and it was understood that all of these things consisted of particles. Uh, they had mass, and their positions in space were well-defined. Energy, on the other hand, so we're talking here about light and electromagnetic radiation, was described as waves as opposed to particles. And energy is massless, and it's delocalized, meaning its position in space could not be specified. And Physicists really thought that kind of all that was remaining to do was to mop up a few lingering questions. It turns out some of those lingering questions turned out to be much harder to solve than they imagined and actually led to the revolutions of quantum mechanics and relativity. So when physicists said that energy behaves like waves, uh, there's some properties of waves that we want to be familiar with. So one of them is interference. So if I have two waves that have the same frequency or wavelength and they're lined up so that the peaks on one wave line up with the peaks on another wave, we can actually combine those waves via constructive interference. And so the combinations of the waves have an increased amplitude and so in some sense they get brighter. If I take those same two waves and I shift one of them so that we would say that they're out of phase, and so now the peak on one wave lines up with the trough on another wave, 
they'll combine destructively through destructive interference, and they actually cancel each other out. And so we would see essentially a dark spot. And so right, waves do these things. Um, particles do not, right? So if we imagine baseballs, like if I have two pitchers, uh, you know, throwing in the bullpen, when they're throwing their baseballs together, you know, we don't suddenly have the baseballs combine into a single larger baseball or something like that. That doesn't happen. Or they certainly, there's not the case where one baseball will disappear um, because it's in phase with another baseball. Uh, and so this is one difference between particle behavior and wave behavior. Only waves have this property of interference. Another property of waves that we're interested in is diffraction. And so essentially this is the ability of, of light or waves to bend around corners or formally to say the process by which a system of waves spreads out after passing through an aperture. So if I have um, a source of waves incident on say a screen that has a hole in it, the waves will spread out after passing through that hole or passing through that aperture. Right? Whereas if I have particles instead, right, some of the particles will be blocked and the ones that make it through will just go straight through. Right? If I go back to my analogy of baseballs, right, if I throw you know baseballs through a slot, they're not going to bend around the corner uh, like we would expect a light wave to do. And so if I combine these two properties, interference and diffraction, we can uh, do an experiment that's called a two-slit experiment, where we get two-slit interference. And so if I have one light source and I shine it on a screen that has two holes in it or two apertures, I'll essentially form two new sets or sources of waves. And when I go to different points on a screen that I have behind it, the waves coming from each aperture are going to have to travel different distances. And so depending on where we are on the screen back here, the waves may line up where they're out of phase or where they're in phase. And so if I'm on a spot where they line up where they're out of phase, I would actually get a dark spot because the waves are going to destructively interfere and I'll have no amplitude. If I'm at a point on the screen where the waves are in phase, then they'll interfere constructively and I'll see a bright spot. And so we see this pattern of alternating dark and bright spots depending on the distances that the two waves had to travel to get to the screen. And so again, this is something that only waves we would expect to do. Uh, particles uh, would not do this. If I had two baseballs or two uh, machine guns and I you know, fired them at a screen uh, that could stop them um, and they went through, right? I would see essentially two spots, right? The baseballs would either hit here or they would hit here. Um, there wouldn't be this what we call diffraction pattern. All right, and so we'll explore some of the properties of waves and talk about why this two-slit interference is important as we move on in the other videos.